Dreams. The big friendly giant was seated at the great table in his cave, and he was doing his homework. Sophie sat cross-legged on the tabletop nearby, watching him at work. The glass jar containing the one and only good dream they had caught that day stood between them. The BFG, with great care and patience, was printing something on a piece of paper with an enormous pencil. What are you writing? Sophie asked him. Every dream is having its special label on the bottle, the BFG said. How else could I be finding the one that I'm wanting in a hurry? But can you really and truly tell what sort of dream it's going to be simply by listening to it? I can, the BFG said, not looking up. But how? Is it the way it hums and buzzes? You is less and more right, the BFG said. Every dream in the world is making a different sort of buzzy hum music. And these grand swashbuggling ears of mine is able to read that music. By music, do you mean tunes? I is not meaning tunes. Then what do you mean? Human beings is having their own music, right or left. Right, Sophie said, lots of music. And sometimes human beings is very overcome when they is hearing wondrous music. They is getting shivers down their spindles, right or left. Right, Sophie said. So the music is saying something to them. It's sending a message. I do not think the human beings is knowing what that message is, but they is loving it just the same. Well, that's about right, Sophie said. But because of these jump squiffling ears of mine, the BFG said, I is not only able to hear the music the dreams is making, but I is understanding it also. What do you mean, understanding it? Sophie said. I can read it, the BFG said. It talks to me. It's like a language. I find that just a little hard to believe, Sophie said. I bet she's also finding it hard to believe in quagwinkles, the BFG said. And now they's visiting us from the stairs. Of course I don't believe that, Sophie said. The BFG regarded her gravely with those huge eyes of his. I hope you will forgive me, he said. If I tell you that human beings is thinking that he is very clever, but they is not. They is nearly all of them, not muchers and squeak pips. I beg your pardon, Sophie said. The matter with human beings, the BFG went on, is that they is absolutely refusing to believe in anything unless they is actually seeing it right in front of their own schnozzles. Of course Quagwinkles is existing, eyes meeting them oftenly. I was even chittering to them. He turned away contemptuously from Sophie and resumed his writing. Sophie moved over to read what he had written so far. The letters were printed big and bold and were not very well formed. Here's what it said. This dream is about how I is saving my teacher from drowning. I is diving into the river from a high bridge, and I is dragging my teacher to the bank, and then I is giving him the kiss of death. The kiss of what? Sophie asked. The BFG stopped writing and raised his head slowly. His eyes rested on Sophie's face. I was telling you once before, he said quietly, that I is never having a chance to go to school. I is full of mistakes. That is not my fault. I do my best. He's a lovely little girl, but please remember that you is not exactly Miss Know Everything Yourself. I'm sorry, Sophie said. I really am. It is very rude of me to keep correcting you. The BFG gazed at her for a little longer. Then he bent, it, bent his head down again to a slow, laborious writing. Tell me honestly, Sophie said. If you blew this dream into my bedroom when I was asleep, would I really and truly start dreaming about how I saved my teacher from drowning by diving off the bridge? More, the BFG said, a lot more. But I can't not be squibbling the whole grope flunking dream on a teachy bit to paper. Of course there's more. The BFG laid down his pencil and placed one massive ear close to the jar. For about 30 seconds, he listened intent intently. Yes, he said, nodding his great head solemnly up and down. This dream is continuing very nice. It is a very dory, hunky ending. How does it end? Sophie said. Please tell me. 
You'd be dreaming that the morning after you saving the teacher from the river, you was arriving at school and you were seeing all the 500 pupils sitting in the assembly hall and all the children's teachers as well. And the head teacher is then standing up and saying, I is wanting the whole school to give three cheers for Sophie because she is so brave in saving the life of our fine arithmetic teacher, Mr. Figgins, who was unfortunately pushed off the bridge into the river by our gym teacher, Miss Amelia Hopscotch. So three cheers for Sophie. And the whole school was then cheering like May and shouting, Bravo, well done. And forever after that, even when you was getting your sums all gung swizzled and muckled up, Mr. Figgins is always giving you 10 out of 10 and writing, Good work, Sophie, in your exercise book. Then he's waking up. I like that dream, Sophie said. Of course you like it, the BFG said. It's a fizz wizard. He licked the back of the label and stuck it on the jar. I is usually writing a bit more than this on the labels, but she's watching me and making me jumpsy. I'll go and sit somewhere else, Sophie said. And don't go, he said. Look in the jar carefully and I think you'll be seeing this dream. Sophie peered into the jar and there, sure enough, she saw the faint translucent outline of something about the size of a hen's egg. There was just a touch of color in it. A pale sea green, soft and shimmering and very beautiful. There it lay, this small oblong sea green jellyish thing at the bottom of the jar, quite peaceful, but pulsing gently. The whole of it moving in and out ever so slightly as though it were breathing. <gasps> it's moving, Sophie cried. It's alive. Of course it's alive. What will you feed it on? Sophie asked. It is not needing any food, the BFG told her. That's cruel, Sophie said. Everything alive needs food of some sort, even trees and plants. North wind is alive, the BFG said. It's moving. It touches you on the cheek and on the hands, but nobody's feeding it. Sophie was silent. This extraordinary giant was disturbing her ideas. He seemed to be leading her towards mysteries that were beyond her understanding. Dreams not needing anything, the BFG went on. If it's a good one, it's waiting peaceably forever until it's released and allowed to do its job. If it's a bad one, it's always fighting to get out. The BFG stood up and walked over to one of the many shelves and placed the latest jar among the thousands of others. Can I please see some of the other dreams? Sophie asked him. The BFG hesitated. Nobody's ever seen them before, he said. But perhaps after all, I was letting you have a little peep. He picked her up off the table and stood her on the palm of one of his huge hands. He carried her towards the shelves. Over here's some of the good dreams, he said, the fizz wizards. Would you hold me closer so I can read the labels, Sophie said. My labels is only telling bits of it, the BFG said. The dreams is usually much longer. The labels is just to remind me. Sophie started to read the labels. The first one seemed long enough to her. It went right around the jar, and as she read it, she had to keep turning the jar. This is what it said. <laughs>